In this video, we'll be taking apart the Motorola Moto G14. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate with either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the vegan leather back. There are now 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Heat needs to be applied to the camera bezel to loosen up the adhesive underneath in order to be able to pry it off, revealing yet another Phillips screw hidden underneath. Now that hidden Phillips screw can be removed. At this point a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. The back housing cannot be slightly lifted up but be careful since the fingerprint reader cable is still attached to the main board. Here's a better look at the plastic back housing. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There's also some graphite film over the speaker cover. Looking at the other side, we can see multiple antenna flex cables around the back housing. There's some graphite film over the motherboard to help transfer heat, which needs to be peeled off or lifted over so we can disconnect the flex cables from the main board. The battery cable cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cable on the bottom right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping it off. Looking closer at the main board, we can see a 50 megapixel primary camera and a 2 megapixel macro lens, none of which have OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located here and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. We can also see solder points on the top of the motherboard where a secondary microphone would go, however it's not included on this model. The connector for the 8 megapixel front facing camera is located here, which can also be disconnected by just popping it off, and the headphone jack is located on the top corner. There is also a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the back, as well as the proximity sensor, and the connector for the primary camera. We also have a better look at the 8 megapixel front facing camera. There is some copper tape on the back shields to help transfer heat, as well as a good amount of thermal paste. Once the shield cover has been removed, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM. The ROM or storage chip is located underneath the covered shield. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. There are no adhesive pull tabs or pry pouches to help you pry the battery off, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off.
Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been pried off, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is routed right to an opening in the mid frame, and this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, as well as the camera bezel, and then remove the screws on the back housing and the housing itself. You then disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable from the main board, pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You'd then pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. Now the flex cable connecting the main board to the subboard, as well as the other end of the coaxial cable, need to be disconnected. There's a rubber gasket around the charger port, another liquid damage indicator sticker, and the primary microphone is located underneath that shield. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the bottom speaker. If you need to replace those, you just have to apply some heat and gently pry them off. The flex cable for volume keys and power button is located on the side, which can be peeled off if needed to be replaced and the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. There's also one more liquid damage indicator sticker, which is on the frame underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a five out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.